Why is Luka Doncic the most disrespected young superstar the NBA has ever seen? In the early days of his career, Luka was seen as the league's next generational talent and he has delivered, making first team All-NBA five times in his first six seasons. True greatness, but despite his on-court play, for years we have heard from the media that Luka is too fat, that he cries to the refs, that he puts up empty numbers, and is another prime James Harden. All offense, no defense, and you can't win a title without both. Only now, in the Western Conference, Conference Finals. Luka has been proving all of his haters wrong. In fact, he's playing at a level we have only seen from one other player in the history of the NBA, Michael Jordan. As in his first six seasons, Luka has averaged a combined 28.7 points, 8.7 rebounds, and 8.3 assists per game. Numbers we can all agree are absurd as Luka is just 25 years old. And not only are these stats eye-popping, they are also historic. In the post-merger era of the NBA, only two players, Michael Jordan and Luka Doncic, have have averaged at least 28 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists combined in their first 6 seasons. But what's even more impressive is that in any era, only Michael Jordan and Luka Doncic have averaged at least 31 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists per game in the playoffs in their first 6 seasons. On top of this, Luka is 2 years younger than Mike was to end his 6th year in the league, further proof we are watching a generational talent, an all-time player carving out his own path to NBA greatness, but for some reason, in Instead of focusing on the good, Luca's game has been dissected to a point that seems extremely unfair. So what's up guys, Mike here, and to show you what I mean by unfair, we need to look at the current 2024 NBA season. A season where Luka Doncic averaged 33.9 points, 9.8 assists, and 9.2 rebounds per game on a 50-win, 5th-seeded Dallas Mavericks team. Keep those numbers in mind as we take a step back. Nikola Jokic won his second MVP after a 48-win season in 2022. The year before, Jokic won his first MVP and his team was swept in the second round in the playoffs. In 2022, the Nuggets lost in the first round of the playoffs to the Warriors in just five games. Did injuries come into play and severely hurt Denver in the playoffs? Yes. Did Jokic still win his second MVP despite this, without even a trip to the Western Conference Finals on his resume at the time? Also yes, which raises the question, is Luka's story counting against him? In just his second season in the league, Luka averaged 28.8 points, 9.4 rebounds, and 8.8 assists per game. In that season, on a Mavericks team that finished 7th in the Western Conference, Luka finished 4th in MVP voting. At that point, it seemed like an MVP in the near future was certain. However, despite historic greatness, Luka has not truly come close to winning the MVP award, which we will get into when we look at the voting. For right now, though, let's compare Luka's first 6 seasons to Michael Jordan. Looking at the stats, they stand up well. When we compare Luka's first 6 seasons to LeBron James, Luka's stats stand up well. Luka Luka even led an undermanned team to the Western Conference Finals just two years ago, beating the top seed in the West in the process, but it hasn't mattered. What is the reason for this? Perhaps Luka's story. What is also legendary is we have a new channel, Coors Light, where we are doing detailed what ifs, such as our recent latest video, What If Luka Doncic Was In Michael Jordan's Draft Class. The link to that video is in the description. It would mean a lot if you went and checked out that video and subscribed and turned on post notifications for Coors Light if you enjoy the content there, only if you enjoy the content. By the way, a new what if is coming on this channel very, very soon. Stay tuned for that. And now getting back into it, there is no doubting the fact that the MVP is a narrative driven award. A player needs both the stats and the story to end the season with the MVP trophy. And Nikola Jokic benefited from the fact that he was a second round pick who emerged into a superstar. Looking back to 2017, Russell Westbrook was named MVP after he averaged a triple double for the season, but also after Kevin Durant had left him on his own. The voters did not care about wins in that year. The Thunder won won just 47 games and were 6th in the Western Conference. Unlike with Luka, this did not matter. This season was seen as a historic achievement and Russ took home the award, which makes sense. Both Jokic and Russ not only got credit for carrying their teams, they were heavily celebrated for it. No one remembers that the Thunder lost in just 5 games to the Rockets in the first round of the 2017 playoffs. They remember the triple-double. When voting for the MVP in both 2017 and 2021 and 22, voters awarded Russ and Jokic for taking giant leaps in their careers. Luka, meanwhile, has been so good for so long that it feels like he's getting punished for his early success. This season, Luka's Mavs had 50 wins and finished 5th in the West. However, Luka had no realistic shot of winning the MVP award with one of the best individual seasons we have ever seen. 33.9 points, 9.8 assists, and 9.2 rebounds per game? These stats are unheard of. And with them, Luka received just 4 first place votes for the MVP, while Jokic, who only had more rebounds per game than Luka with almost 
almost seven less points per game, coasted to his third MVP award with 79 first place votes. Shea Gilgis Alexander, who benefited from the storyline of a big time come up that we didn't see coming as originally Shea was drafted just 11th overall and the Thunder were a surprise number one seed in the West this year. Shea averaged less points, less rebounds, and less assists than Luka and was given 15 first place votes to Luka's four. No hate on Jokic or Shea, incredible years. But out of these three players, only one remains in the playoffs and his name is Luka Doncic. So maybe next season, Luka will take home the award, but the question remains, why does Luka specifically need to prove himself in the playoffs or secure a top seed in the West while we have just watched other MVPs win the award without either of these things? I think it's because of unfair narratives that have been created about Luka. However, with that said, I also think those narratives are about to change. Because at this point in time, Luka has done what a true great does. He has shut up his haters through his on-court success. ESPN gave the Mavericks a D grade for both the Kyrie Irving and PJ Washington trades, which shows what the media knows. Kyrie, a couple months ago, you <laughs> talked about the D grade that ESPN gave y'all. Could y'all talk about just, D? yeah, they gave him a D rating for the trade from the Nets. So could, could y'all... <laughs> <laughs> Hey man. We enjoy playing with each other. Uh, I don't, we don't really care what other people have to say. The pair of Luka and Kyrie specifically was not supposed to work. At the time of the trade, it was seen as a desperation move to get Luka some kind of star power as it was questioned. How could two ball dominant stars play together, especially after Kyrie had already shown he was not a fan of how LeBron James played during their time together with the Cavaliers? As even though LeBron and Kyrie won a championship together in 2016, Kyrie specifically requested a trade away from Cleveland just one season later because he wanted to take a step out of LeBron's shadow. But get this, 2017 LeBron had a usage rate of 30 to Kyrie's 30.8. 2024 Luka has a usage rate of 36 to Kyrie's 28.1. So why are Kyrie and Luka best friends while in 2017 Kyrie wanted out? Well, while the media has painted Luka as a difficult player to play with, someone whose teammates don't like his ball dominance, the reality is that Luka's teammates, other than Kristaps Porzingis, have had nothing but amazing things to say about him, they love him and for good reason. Looking at Luka and Kyrie's relationship, we can see that Luka has not only gone out of his way to praise Kyrie off the court at all times, but also on the court he can be found running to Kyrie whenever he's fouled to pick him up, he can be found walking off the court with Kyrie arm in arm after wins. It is very clear Luka has gone out of his way to make Kyrie feel at home in Dallas. This is also nothing against LeBron, that is not the point here, Kyrie may have been in a different headspace when he was playing in Cleveland. But for Luka, this clearly shows that he is a team leader, that he is a franchise player you can rely on. The type of teammate and star who makes the rest of his roster feel valued and make sure they get the credit they deserve. Which is again something that we were not told by the media. The narrative was completely the opposite. Diving deeper into this, the media again gave the Kyrie Irving trade a D, the PJ Washington trade a D, and Dallas lost Jalen Brunson, who was just second team All NBA this year, for nothing. For for some reason, none of this was factored into Luka's MVP case. He was not given credit at all for running the ship to 50 wins and making these supposed bad moves work out in Dallas's favor. Luka has now led a roster that should not be winning according to the experts to his second Western Conference Finals appearance in three seasons. He has also given us an individual three-year run that is unlike anything we have ever seen. I'm not exaggerating here. Since Kobe Bryant won the MVP award in 2008, here are the stats of every single non-center MVP for from their third to sixth seasons. In this four year window, you may have noticed that Luca leads everyone in points and assists and is second to only Giannis in rebounds. Historic, never before seen stats. And on defense, Luca has also improved. When we compare his first two playoff runs to this season, Luca has a better defensive rating, more defensive win shares, and a better defensive box score plus minus. He has shown at every single turn that he has a chance to become a legitimate top 10 player of all time. Maybe if he wins a championship this season, the media will finally see him in the same light. I want to know what you think down below. Do you think the media is disrespecting Luca at this point, or at least not giving him the credit he deserves? I'm interested to see what you say. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss another video like this. If you are still here, I really think you'll enjoy this video on Derrick Rose, as Derrick Rose was almost homeless and then became the NBA's MVP. Or maybe you'll like this video on Anthony Edwards and how he is being compared to Michael Jordan. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. Have an awesome day and peace.